Okay, so I'm not really sure how to start this. Um, my name's Allie. I was a heroin addict for four years. Um, I'm going to start from the beginning and kind of work my way up. Um, growing up, my dad was an alcoholic. Um, my mom was emotionally distant. Um, she and I have never really got along. We still don't have a great relationship. Um, my dad passed away two and a half years ago. Um, and I haven't spoke to my mom since. We got into a big fight. I mean, it is what it is. Um, so anyway, um, I graduated high school in 2007. Um, after that, while I was in high school, my junior and senior year, I left early and went to college. Um, after high school, I attended college full time. I met someone there. We, I moved in with him pretty quickly. I wanted out of my house, away from my parents, like everyone else when you're that age. Um, we moved in together, got engaged pretty quickly. Um, I ended up getting pregnant. Um, I had an ectopic pregnancy, had to have emergency surgery. I was bleeding internally. Um, when they did the surgery, they told me that I had blood all the way up into my diaphragm, which that's a lot of blood. Um, I was losing consciousness. I was bleeding, cramping. It, it was bad. Um, less than a month after that, my ex left me. Um, I took that really hard. It was my first serious relationship. Um, first everything. Like, I thought I was in love with that man. Um, I don't think it was so much love as it was love of love, maybe. Um, <laughs> um, at that time, I was prescribed um, Percocet after the surgery. I didn't take those. I did end up selling them. Um, but it was to my ex's sister. Um, but anyway, um, I never took those. I never touched pain medication. Um, until I hurt my back, and that was in 2010, I'll get to that. Um, so I, I went to my mom, I moved in with my mom, stayed there for maybe a week. Um, she and I ended up getting into a fight, my dad came and got me, I moved in with my dad. Um, while I lived with him, I was very depressed because of the breakup and all that. I ended up being hospitalized in the mental ward of my hometown's hospital. Um, my dad lived in a different town by this time. I went back to my hometown to go to the hospital. Um, I was there for a week and a half. Um, and they diagnosed me with bipolar disorder, borderline personality disorder, and histrionic personality disorder. Um, you can look those up. They're complicated <laughs> at best. Um, I'm kind of nervous talking about this stuff, so... Sorry. Um, so after that, I was in outpatient therapy for a while. Um, went back to my dad's. I got ended up with a job at Walmart. I worked there for a year and a half. Um, the reason I left that job is because I ended up hurting my back. I had a herniated disc. I did have surgery on that. But before that surgery... I was, I was experimenting with drugs. I mean, I didn't grow up around drugs. I didn't know anything about it. The only thing we were told, like in school and everything, is that drugs are bad. Drugs will kill you. Da 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 da. Well, I tried drugs. Drugs didn't kill me. And in my mind, well, nothing's as bad as what they said. So it can't be that bad, right? No, all wrong. Um, drugs are just as bad as what they say. Um, it might take a little while for you to realize that, but that's the truth. Um, I, instead of taking the pain medication, um, I hadn't been prescribed it yet. I knew I could go to the ER and get pain meds, blah, 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 whatever. But I didn't want to be that person. Um, I didn't want to be on pain medication. And I was living in a different town at this point. I had my own place. I wasn't staying with my dad anymore. 
Well, I hurt my back, lost my job, lost my place. I was pretty much homeless and just crashing on couches and with friends and things like that and doing whatever I wanted to do, whether it was cocaine, acid, weed, whatever, but I never touched opiates. Um, finally, I had enough. I ran out of money. I moved back in with my dad. In the town that he lived in, everyone did pills. Pills were this big thing. Um, that's all anybody did. And I fell in. Um, I started doing pills, which led to me selling pills. Um, I ended up getting my own prescriptions, was selling those, selling whatever I could get from whoever. Um, <laughs> it, it was ridiculous. And um, I ended up catching a case. I was charged with aggravated trafficking. Um, I pled intervention to lieu of conviction. Um, I, which means you are on community control for a year. You have to, you're supposed to attend counseling, which I didn't do. Um, have a job to be able to pay off your fines and you can't get off probation until you pay your fines off. Well, I got a job at another Walmart, which is where I met my husband. Um, and I did meet him while I was on community control. Um, I spent... Two days if you can count that in jail um, because I did violate my probation I tested dirty um, I had done two Percocets I had worked a double shift my back was killing me that's no excuse you should always go by what your probation officer says um, I did two per Percocets 10 milligram Percocets on a Sunday skipped probation Monday got called in Tuesday and was dirty. Um, I was immediately taken to the sheriff's station, had to wait for someone else to get through court and was then transported to the multi-county jail. Um, and I spent the night there the whole next day and went home the following morning because I had to work. Um, so the probation officer, I had been calling my dad, begging him to get me out. Um, all the girls in there said that I'd be in there for at least seven days. I'm like, I'm going to lose my job. I'm going to lose my job. And was really worried about it. And I had called my dad several times. Evidently, he had called my mom. And she talked to the probation officer. Um, and they were able to get me out before I lost my job. But the condition was that I was to go stay with my mom. And stay out of the town where my dad lived. And where I'd been selling drugs and whatever. Um, <laughs> so after all this, my husband and I stayed together. We moved to the town where I initially started doing pills and selling pills and all that. And we had friends of ours. We were the only people we knew with a vehicle and licenses. Some people we knew asked us for a ride. We didn't know what they were going for. But we had an idea. Um, one night they offered us to partake in what they had, and we did. And I loved it. It was great. Um, heroin sucks you in. It just does. And um, heroin took everything from us. We sold everything we had. We traded everything we had. We would not spend a dime on anything other than dope. Um, if we did, I'd get very, very mad. Um, we'd get into horrible fights when we were sick. Um, like I put my hands on my husband, being dope sick. He's put his hands on me. Never, like, he would never start it. He was defending himself from me. Not that anybody should ever do that or think it's okay, but, I mean, you, you do things on substances that you wouldn't normally do, and right, wrong, or indifferent, that's just how it is. Um, we ended up, I, when my dad passed away, I got his house, um, 
his house was falling apart. We ended up moving with friends of ours um, who also did heroin. And um, up to this point, we had only snorted heroin. We'd never used it intravenously um, ever. Um, and slowly but surely, that's what we ended up doing. Um, we shot up for about six months before we decided to get clean. Um, we lived in that house for a year and a half. Um, we moved out and moved to where we are now, which was the best thing we've ever done. It was the best decision we ever made. Um, we ended up losing our vehicle. It broke down. And we sold it for $100. Um, I had just paid $7,000 cash for it. Um, we got into a car accident and got a settlement. I just paid $7,000 for this vehicle. And we sold it. It broke down and we sold it for $100 to get high. It was, uh, yeah. <laughs> it was stupid. Um, we probably easily could have got it fixed. But he had to work the next day and... He was going to be sick. He was going to call off and lose his job. And at that point, his job was the only thing he had, the only thing we had, and the only way we could keep him being sick. Um, and after that, after we lost the car, we kind of sat down and decided, like, look, I mean, the car was the last thing we had that we could sell. We have no money. We're spending your check before we even get it. Um, we have absolutely nothing. Like, we have to do something. We have to make a choice. And I was always the one that's like, I'm never going to quit. I love dope. I don't care. I'm never going to quit. I love it. I'm, I don't, you know, I, I just never, never wanted to quit. That was never a part of my plan. Um, but finally we just sat down and looked at it and we're like, look, we have nothing. We've lost everything. We've given everything away. And it's all because of dope. And we, I called around. I could not find anywhere to take us as a couple. And to me, it didn't make sense for one of us to go get clean while the other one's still out here trying to get high or sick. Because by the time the other one of us gets to go in, the other one's going to be out and they're going to be bored and they're going to be by themselves and probably end up using. Um, so I called and called and called. And finally, um, I was told that the if I went to the ER here in the town I live in, that they would take us. And the doctor that runs the detox there doesn't, like, he wants to help anyone who needs help, um, even if you're a couple. So we checked in. And June 29th, we checked in. We hadn't used since, like, 6 in the evening the day before. We went in. Um, they ran some tests and had us admitted that same day. Um, we were there until July 3rd. And in a few days, on August 29th, will be two months. I mean, I'm not going to say we didn't slip up. I think we used twice since detox. Um, but we've been on Suboxone. I don't crave it. I'm so happy. We've ha we have things now that won't get sold. Um, we're able to do what we want and have what we want. Um, we're going to be saving up for a car and... I mean, things are going really well. Um, I really, really, really encourage you if you have a problem. I always knew I had a problem. Always. I just didn't want to do anything about it. I had no reason to. Um, in my mind. Um, but if you have a problem, please get help. Um, the best thing you can do is call your local emergency room. Um, see what resources they have. Or your local counseling center. Or... I mean, just do some research at the very least to see what you can do. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, I OD'd five times. Three of those times I woke up in the emergency room after being narcan And that's the most horrible feeling ever. Um, <laughs> waking up after being narcan is horrible. It's like a nightmare. Um, you feel like crap. They're pelting you with questions. They want to know what you did, why you did it, when you did it, who you got it from, and you feel like crap. Um, like I was vomiting the whole time. Like it, it was horrible. 
um, the last time it happened and I woke up in the hospital before that, I kind of knew what I was doing, but I don't know how to explain it. I kind of knew when I did what I did. Um, I had told my husband, like, just leave me. Don't take me to the hospital. Just kick me out of the car. I'm done. Like, I'm so done. Um, and this was a couple years before we ended up getting clean. And we had gotten clean in the past, but we always ended up getting bored and using again. Because in the town that we were in at the time, there was absolutely nothing to do. Nothing to occupy us. And we weren't really, really taking it seriously anyway, to be honest. Um... You know when you're taking it seriously, like, you know when you're just completely done. Um, we are on Suboxone now, and, I mean, it's great. I mean, I mean, it's not fantastic, we're not getting high, but at the same time, like, it kind of helps with the cravings. It doesn't help with the cravings at first, but once you've been on it for a while, it does help. And if you do try to use, like, the two times that we use since we've been on Suboxone, like, I did not feel it at all. Which is a good deterrent because you're like, well, crap, I just spent all this money and for nothing. Because I don't feel it. Whatever. So it kind of helps you get over it in that way too. Um, and since then, I've been able to get back into what I really love. Which is like, I really like doing makeup. I like playing with it. I like learning about skincare and things like that. Which I've been posting on Instagram a lot. And I'll be uploading some videos and stuff too of things that... I really like things I don't like so much um, and stuff like that I just wanted to tell you guys a little bit about our journey and getting clean and maybe encourage other people who feel like they have a problem um, or don't feel like they have a problem because I mean most people don't I mean, you don't you don't notice it until you're like I have nothing I have absolutely nothing and if I can help someone before you get to that point, that would mean everything to me because opening your eyes one day and realizing you have absolutely nothing is the worst feeling in the world. Like, it just is. It sucks. <laughs> it really sucks. So, I hope you enjoy my ghetto fabulous story and my ghetto fabulous video. Um, I haven't quite got the equipment that I'd like to have yet. Working on it. Um, alright, see you soon.